one of the fascinating things about Bitcoin, and sorry to romanticize certain notions, but Satoshi Nakamoto, that the founder is anonymous. Um, maybe you can speak to whether that's useful, but also I just like the psychology of that, to imagine that there's a human being that was able to create something special and walk away. Uh, so first, are you Satoshi Nakamoto? I'm certain I'm not. <laughs> uh, no, I, actually, I you know I think the provenance is really important, and if I were to look at the highlighted points, I I think having a founder that was anonymous or pseudonymous is important. I think the founder disappearing is also important. I think that the fact that the Satoshi coins never moved is also important. I think the, the lack of an initial coin offering is also important. I think the lack of a corporate sponsor is important. I think the fact that it traded for 15 months with no commercial value was also important. You know, I, I think that um, the simplicity of the protocol is very important. I think that the, the outcome of the block size wars is very important. And all of those things add up to common property. They're, they're all indicia, indicators of a digital property as opposed to security. If there was a Satoshi sitting around, sitting on top of $50 billion worth of Bitcoin, it would. I don't think it would um, cripple Bitcoin as property, but I think it would undermine it's digital property. And I, if I wanted to undermine a crypto asset network, I would do the opposite of all those things. I would launch one myself. I would sell 25% or 50% of the general public. I would keep some of the initial, I would pre-mine some stuff or early mine it, you know, and I would keep an influence on it. Those are all the opposite of what you would do in order to create common property. And so I, I see the entire story as Satoshi giving a gift of digital property to the human race and disappearing. Do you think it was one person? Do you have ideas of who it could be? I don't care to speculate. Okay. <laughs> but do you think it was one person? Like, I think it, it was one person. Maybe in conjunction with a bunch of others. I mean, it might have been a group of people that were working together, but certainly the, there's a Satoshi. Account. I mean, it's just so fascinating to me that one person could be so brave and thoughtful. Or do you think a lot of his accent, like the block size wars, the decision to make a block a certain size, all, all the things you mentioned led up to the characteristics that make Bitcoin property. Do you think that's an accident or it was deeply thought through? Like how does this is almost like a history of science I question? Think people tried it for they tried forty of them, right? I mean, I I think there's a there's a history of attempting to create something like this, and it was tried many many times, and and they failed for different reasons. And I think that it's like Prometheus tried to start a fire forty seven times, and maybe the forty eighth time it sparked, and and that's how I see this. This is the first one that sparked, and uh, and it sets a roadmap for us, and I and I think. If you're looking for any one word that characterizes, it's fair, right? The whole point of the network is it's a fair launch, a fair distribution. Like, yeah, I have Bitcoin, but I bought it. In fact, I've, you know, at this point, we've paid $4 billion of you real cash to buy it. If, if I was sitting on the same position and I had it for free, then there's always this question of, did I, pay, you know, or I bought it for a nickel a coin or a penny a coin? The question is, was it fair? And and that's a very hard question to answer, right? Did you acquire the Bitcoin that you own fairly? And if you roll the clock back, you know, you could have bought it for a nickel or a dime, but that was when it was a million times more likely to fail, mm -hmm. right? When the risk was greater, the cost was lower, and then over time, the risk became lower and the cost became greater. And the real critical thing was to allow the marketplace, absent any powerful interested actor, right? It's almost like if Satoshi had held a million coins and then stayed engaged for 10 more years, tweaking things in the background, there'd still be that question. But what we've got is really a beautiful thing. We've got a 
we've got a chain reaction in cyberspace or an ideology spreading virally in the world that um that has seasoned in a fair ethical fashion sometimes it's a very violent brutal fashion with all the volatility right and there's been a lot of you know, a lot of sound and fury along the way 